Hey everybody, welcome to Trading Capital's daily analysis video. It is Monday, May 23rd, jumping into the QQQ NASDAQ charts. It has been a broad market rally across the whole stock market. Every single sector today is positive with the XLK and the financials leading the way as well as energy is also very, very strong today. So since it is a broad market um, rally, we have seen a, a lift in our positions. Uh, we did take profit on our FAS, which was our um, financial leverage play. So beautiful job. We banked just about 13% on that trade today. And we were sitting in that trade for maybe a couple days at most. So congratulations to those of you that took that trade with me. Um, we'll, we'll jump into the XLF. I do think there's potential more upside, but when you see banks acting strong, it's generally a good leading indicator that you can expect the rally to, to last uh, a couple days at the minimum. Um, basically, our whole system relies on debt and banks are the one thing that control and issue out debt. And if they're moving in a positive direction, there's a strong probability that the markets will, will rally alongside the banks. Um, jumping into the QQQ here, you can see that we are putting in this um, bullish consolidation. You have this um, bottoming formation here, almost this inverse head and shoulders with a potential neckline running across here. So it stands to suggest that if we break this neckline, you could rally up to this gap fill here around the 306. That would pretty much be the um, max move of this inverse head and shoulders. And I do think that is very probable outcome to happen. Um, so clearly, clearly a strong day on the NASDAQ up 1.64%. If we look at the S&P 500, you can see that this is your options X um, sell off and then your final rip in the last two hours of the market to make those uh, contracts expire worthless. And then today you've um, gapped up and it's never good to gap up in the markets because most likely you do come down and fill that gap. You did fill the gap on an intraday basis and then started to rally from that point on, checked back and continue to. Now you're consolidating sideways in what looks to be that potentially tomorrow we could have that rally starting to move to the upside. Where do I think on the S&P intraday basis we can go is up to this 408 um, just a little over 408 gap fill zone. If we flip to the daily chart, let me remove this parallel channel so it's a little bit easier for us to see our candle formations. You can see that um, there's still this um, gap that has been left unfulfilled. I do think we get up to this 408, 409 area before we start running into our first resistance levels. Generally in a downtrend, stocks will um, especially since we briefly touched the bear market status on Friday, but then we're saved in the last couple hours. But generally when the market is in a severe downtrend, which is what we're in, things, you know, start to fade when they reach their first resistance points. And it's, it's almost the opposite is true when, when we're collapsing very, very hard, stocks are collapsing so fast that they're smashing through their, you know, technical level one, technical level two, and you often have to go with the more conservative level. So the saying is true that when you're in a downtrend and the rally is happening, take profits at the conservative level because things can change on a dime. We've certainly seen some crazy reversals over the last several months, but ultimately I do think there's more upside in this rally. I just want to flip at Zoom. Zoom is a reporting earnings after the hour, so we'll continue to, to monitor that stock to see if there's any changes. I think the big winner on the day for the banks was JPM. JPM was up around, I think it was seven or 8% at the highs here. It did pull back. We shorted for a day trade at the 126.15 area and made a dollar per share. So that was a nice, nice gain for us on an intraday basis and we are out of that trade. Um, taking a look at natural gas, natural gas was a complete powerhouse. That's obviously not good for our short position. I still have not changed my thesis in the sense that I do think natural gas has, you know, rallied to a substantial level that it should come down at some point. And when energies fall, they they fall very, very quickly and a lot faster than what people think. 
and it certainly now looks like it's it's pierced this longer term resistance that we were hoping it would stay within and, and roll over and form that right shoulder. Um, you still could potentially have that um, head and shoulders formation, but at this point in time, it looks like you're going to test this double top. And it looks like um, instead of a head and shoulders formation, if this candle continues to hover at the highs here um, over the next week, we could potentially put in an M top formation. It, it's going to really um, matter in terms of how this candle closes at the end of the week. So one thing that I'm looking for on a weekly basis is whether or not we close above this red line on a weekly basis. So that's around the 818, 819 level. If we close above that weekly reversal signal, then natural gas likely will have a move to $10 area. $10, there's a major pivot high from the early 2000s that we could scroll back to. I won't do it in this video, but you can certainly check it out on your charts. But nonetheless, it does look like the next resistance is your double top area. We have not confirmed above this longer term resistance trend line here. So tomorrow will be confirmation day for natural gas confirming above this level. Obviously, since you've blasted through that level, you're very close to the double top scenario. Um, there is that is your next level of resistance that $9 level. There is the case that it could potentially pierce it and then fall a little bit lower. But we'll just have to monitor this. We did add to our KOLD. I'm still in the camp that energies have to come down. Yes, I know the fundamental picture that you know the war and the supply with Russia and Ukraine, but inevitably, with the European Union having to purchase some of the Russian natural gas, it should lower that initial demand shock that uh, Europe has been experiencing for the last several months. So we'll just have to monitor it, play it by ear, but uh, we'll just have to keep being a little more patient and see where natural gas heads over the coming days. And ultimately, at the end of this week, it, it'll probably be a pivotal sign for us in terms of whether or not we should hang on to our trade or just cut our losses because this weekly close is going to be a pretty, pretty powerful signal in terms of what we should do in, in the sense of holding our natural gas or just taking it, closing it for a loss. So time will tell. We'll just have to uh, see how the rest of the week plays out. Um, if we look at Zoom, Zoom is popping in the after hours here. I don't know what the earnings are doing right now. So we'll just have to wait and see. My apologies, Zoom does not have earnings according to TradingView, but it is getting a big pop in the after hours. So maybe TradingView software is wrong. But anyways, I could have sworn there was uh, earnings for, let me just take a look at this earnings calendar here. Tiger Zoom. I'm not seeing a Zoom right now. Perhaps uh, I was misinformed. Sorry about that, guys. But it is getting a, a substantial pop in the after hours. So that's that's really something that um, is it should align with the earnings. So I mean, we've had a 16% pop, almost 18% pop at the highs there. So I there could potentially be that trading view software is wrong here. I did think they were reporting today. I'll have to double check their main site after this video, but it does make sense that um, they're popping 16 to 18% after hours, which should coincide with earnings. I do think their their uh, chart is just a little um, behind here in, in, in their programming. Um, in terms of oil, if we discuss oil, oil had a pretty flat day today. There wasn't really much action. It finished basically flat on the day. You can see by this doji candle. It, it potentially looks to be that you're putting in this little bit of a bear flag consolidation now to move lower. You did hit the top of this channel twice or three times here and you failed to close above on each time that you pegged this. So we'll just have to see that um, once we slice through these moving averages, I do think you test this 97 level before heading to the lower range of the channel. And I'm still in the camp that once you touch and hit this channel for a third time here, I think that's going to be the breaking point for oil and you should start to break out of this channel that you've been trading in for several weeks now and potentially test this pivot high back here, pretty much this consolidation before the war escalated and broke out. So we'll just have to wait and see what the price of oil and how that unfolds.